you so much. Let's jump to the next question here. So, um, what are what are good financial products uh, creatives should be aware of? So, what are some of the things? I mean, we spoke about the products that that institutions provide to us, but then also we spoke about some of the products that we may have. But what are some products that maybe? Maybe creatives like myself, freelancers, uh, creative entrepreneurs, creative professionals don't know about that maybe they should know about. I'd say chances are you've probably heard about a lot of them, but never thought you needed it or just thought you don't have time for it or never bothered to research it because more times than not, when I'm dealing with my clients, they're just so busy doing what they do and what they're passionate about. Mm-hmm. So some of the things, um, I guess, generally speaking, at a minimum, you should have the checking account that we talked about. But to go along with that checking account would be checks. I mean, it sounds pretty basic. And I realize that checks aren't the most common form of payment anymore. But I personally recommend having at least 50 on hand for a couple of reasons. The biggest thing is they're usually required um, contractually for larger deposits. Uh, Larger purchases may require that or may require a certified check. You can't get a certified check if you don't have a check. Mm, I didn't know right? that. <laughs> um, you're going to go into the bank and ask for a certified check. Now, you can get a draft if they have yeah. them available, but you, if your contract or your purchase or whatever it is you're engaging in is asking for a certified check, you don't have a check, it can't be certified. Mm-hmm. Um, and often it's used in paperwork to show proof of banking information. So direct deposit, direct withdrawal forms. Uh, maybe you're doing a special item with the government that requires it or a special contract of some sort. So I recommend having checks. Again, seems a little bit obsolete. I recommend having at least 50 on hand. Um, the next that's good thing, to know. I, yeah. I, I, I just didn't even think about that, but that's good to know. The next thing um, that I'd recommend, I think that most people will be familiar with this, is PayPal, but a professional PayPal. Okay. So it just brings a little bit more legitimacy to the business when you're doing business in the business name as opposed to like, your personal name, unless of course your personal name is your business. So, so, so I shouldn't, I, I shouldn't, I shouldn't be like, you know, my name is chicken George. Just, just go <laughs> at chicken George at PayPal and pay me my thousand dollars. I shouldn't exactly. do that. Right. <laughs> yeah. I don't recommend it from a legitimacy perspective. <laughs> okay. Um, and I think it gives you like, I mean, very basic. We know what PayPal does, but it gives you that ability to kind of do transactions online and through e-commerce um, quite, quite easily and very cost effective. Mm -hmm. Um, The next thing that I would suggest is a banking product. We touched on it when we talked about what help is available, Mm -hmm. but definitely a business card, um, a business credit card. So a business visa, business MasterCard. And why, why, why why would, why would that be, be something that you would, you, you know, that a creative would need? What if they already have a personal credit card? What's the differences? What are the advantages? Well, a credit card, just like for personal, it builds the credit history of the individual or the organization. Mm -hmm. So if you're doing everything on your business credit card and you're maintaining it really well, what's gonna happen is your personal credit history is gonna look amazing, but your business credit history has nothing. It's the most basic form of building credit history. So you're not gonna, it's gonna be difficult. I shouldn't say you're not going to be able to, but it's gonna be difficult to go from no credit, just making money, having a business checking account to, hey, I need a business mortgage because now I'm opening up a studio. That's true. And and a lot of people go through that and and they don't think like it's it's all about trust. It's all about relationship. If you if your banking institute doesn't have a relationship with you uh, uh, on a business um, standpoint, then they're not going to give your business any play. They're not going to present you with any sort of um, options. Right. So uh, any sort of products. So, no, those points are I mean, they echo so true. The other thing that I would say along the lines of credit cards is actually a system to receive credit card and debit card payments. So when you're small, it could be something as, uh, you know, cost effective and tiny like Square, you know, the little thing that you attach to your phone or whatever. I think they have a couple different systems available um, and they kind of charge you on a transaction basis. Um, But then as you grow, maybe you're doing trade shows, maybe you have a storefront, maybe you're busy, you know, on location doing weddings and you want to, you know, get the second half of your payment right there, you may look into things like a POS system. So point of sale system from your financial institution or third party. So some of the ones that come to in mind would be like a Moneris. So that's the actual terminal that you see when you go to a store. Um, Eventually you may need to move to something like that. I know uh, 
companies like Square are getting more competitive and they actually have whole complete like cash register POS systems. Um, so make sure that even from now, if you don't need it, you're doing your research on that so you understand where the cost lies and what's more cost effective for the types of transactions you're doing and the types mm-hmm. of payments you're receiving. That's good. No, no, that's very, very good. This is, man, I, I mean, I thought I knew what I was doing when I was doing a little research. 